Oh my god, you're back, you guys. Everybody was so excited about our Upgrade You series. If you didn't catch it last month, we started off with health. And so every month we're gonna tackle something that you guys told me on Instagram that you really wanna like change and improve in your life. So health was January. Everybody did such a great job. I'd love seeing you guys' updates. February, we are focusing on, drum roll please, so February, we are focusing on organizing and decluttering your space and your mind. And if you guys saw my episode a few months back, we had Rhea from Reorganize come in and completely redo my whole beauty closet and redo our pantry and it looks amazing and it just like changes everything. I feel like when your space is in order, you feel so much better about just getting through your days. So guys, one tip I got from reading The Happiness Project was taking 10 minutes every night or every morning to just tidy up your space in my closet. Definitely, I need to follow that rule because when I'm rushing, getting ready, or going somewhere, just being lazy, I just throw clothes on the floor. So I'm going to make sure that I, this month, really pay attention to that 10 minutes of just like cleaning up my shit. All right guys, so in my quest for I guess just like peace. I am going to go through my whole closet and we're going to declutter and get rid of stuff that I don't need, stuff that I don't use, stuff that I've just kind of outgrown. I haven't done this in probably, probably since we moved. So it's been about a little over a year. So I've done videos before in the closet and I have to tell you guys, I, I really mean it. Like, sure, it's great having a whole room in our house that has clothes in it, but I will tell you this it starts to become like overwhelming. So like the less amount of choices you have, the better. Because when you walk in and you're just like, oh my God, what am I gonna wear? And there's so much stuff. Again, I'm not bragging, it's not a humble brag. I'm just telling you guys that it ends up just being more stuff to like try on and it's just confusing. I mean, my closet goes into this closet as well. It's just so much stuff. I'm gonna donate a lot of the stuff. I'm going to real real some of the stuff. So I have my bags here ready. I'm gonna do basically, one pile is going to be for like Goodwill. The other pile will be for Real Real, um, some stuff that maybe I can sell. And then I will probably do another pile for like assistance and stuff. So to help categorize this for you guys, I'm gonna do a few piles where, so I have nostalgic clutter, which is just stuff that like makes me think of high school that I love. I have a ton of old t-shirts that I need to go through. I'd say another piece of like nostalgic clutter would be like these shoes that I got for a disco party. There are these beautiful Jimmy shoes. I've worn them a few times, but you know, realistically, they're just not going to be like an all the time shoe. This is a good example of nostalgic clutter. I loved Stussy in high school. And so I like need to learn to not get excited when I see like stuff have a revision. All right, here's a great example of bargain clutter. So I've gone to like sample sales. Okay, so Barney's doesn't even exist anymore. This still has the tag. It was on sale from 189, let's see, it was 180 to $89. And so I thought this Barney's New York scarf was a steal. Never worn it once. I've had it maybe three years. Bargain clutter. Okay, another type of clutter that I have would be freebie or giveaway clutter. This is stuff that gets sent to me. So I get sent so many sunglasses, which I'm really grateful for, but I end up having just like I mean, there's just so many sunglasses here. Like how many sunglasses does one person need? This is like a good buyer's remorse clutter. These are the Bottegas. I saw them in a picture. Asked Gab Waller to source them for me and they're great, but I will never wear that hill. And they've literally just been sitting here for maybe eight months. Okay, another great example of buyer's remorse. I was on vacation. I think we were in Monte Carlo and I just saw this in the gift shop and I was like, oh my God. Great bag, it takes up so much room. I literally will probably never ever use this. Okay, another buyer's remorse purchase. These are so cute, they're Nina Bing. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna be that cool rocker girl that wears blue boots. I've never worn them, so real, real. This is like aspirational clutter. I for sure got these, I think maybe for myself um, at an outlet thinking like I'm this person. And it's just not realistic, like I'm never, I've maybe worn them once and it was for like 10 minutes. Do I have a problem is the question. Probably haven't worn a hat. I mean, I wear them occasionally on vacation, but this just got to be a lot. D 
decluttering for 2020. So I was showing nostalgia clutter, which would be just something that like, mind you of a good time. Like maybe that t-shirt right there, that's an eyesore. It was, yeah, it was from the Way Farmer's Market. It's cute, but like, are you ever gonna wear that? This one? Yeah. Yeah. You're just holding onto that because it holds a, holds a good memory. Uh, no, I wore it recently, actually. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna take it with us on vacation. Okay, so what do you think would be a nostalgic piece of clutter? Oh, there's nostalgic clutter. Here we go. Huh. This, from your birthday, your 40th birthday party. Yeah. You will never wear that shirt ever, ever. Not so you just donate it to somebody that will actually, like maybe a high school kid will love it. Really? Yeah. You don't think I should yeah, keep it? You're not ever gonna wear that. No, we have pictures. That's awesome. Um, what about yeah, that white just, tux back there? That white suit. I just wore that recently. You said you loved it. Jesus. All right, guys. It's been a long two days. I thought I'd get this done in four hours. It's been two days. I want to show you, and I hope to God you can see the difference. So countless hours of realizing a couple of things. I had way too many things and it was stressing me out. This is the edited version. I know it still seems like it's a lot. I could probably edit down again, but this is really good for me. The thing I'm most proud of is that whole bit of extra hangers there. Nothing feels better than extra hangers. So this is the proof of how much stuff I donated. I still kept my sweatsuits. I got rid of some of it, but it cleared up a lot. There's nothing up there anymore. All of the shelves up top there are all empty. I know it seems weird that I want them to be empty, but it just makes my soul feel so much better having empty shelves. One of my new favorite drawers is I got rid of those turny things that I had and I just put all my sunglasses in a drawer. I'm gonna get it lined with velvet so they don't slide around, but I'm so happy. That's just half of it. We're gonna take some to Goodwill and some to the downtown women's shelter. This is all shoes and bags for Real Real to have them come over. And then this is both mine and Mike's pile of stuff for Real Real. It got Real Real in here. This is not an ad for Real Real, by the way. I just like saying Real Real. Having a coats yet, we'll get there, but I'm just so proud. I feel like a new person, a new me, 2020. This was long overdue. I feel like I said goodbye to my 30s. My 30s. Ugh, oh, look it. One man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> Decluttering and organizing has now moved to my mom's house because she needs some help. Oof, I'm excited for these before and after, do you? Mike is currently fixing the Lazy Susan. The thing that's keeping me going is we have this done. That's good. Yeah, we have that emptied now. It's 10 p.m. My mom has 17 different types of flour and get Costco sized graham crackers in case we run out. So we are gonna be good for now until 2024. So the second part of this month's challenge is decluttering and organizing your mind. So research shows that it takes 21 days to really make something stick and become a new habit. So I would suggest for you guys, don't get overwhelmed with like each month having goals and feeling like you can't do it. If you just put it into little small things that you can do every single day, it'll be so much more helpful for you. I personally, I'm hiding my post-its here, but I have post-its all over my house just to remind me of whatever I'm doing for the month. And it really helped me last month with the health challenge. So what I would say to like declutter your mind, you should definitely try to do meditation. I'm gonna do it every day this month in the morning or in the evening. And then I also would say, write things down. Cause like a lot of times I get overwhelmed if there's like a lot of thoughts going on. I keep a post-it. Cause I don't have my phone next to my bed, but I keep a post-it and a pen next to my bed. if like something comes to my mind and I just like jot it down to get it out of my head. So definitely like whether it's notes on your phone or if you need to physically write something down on a list, write it down to just get it away from whatever's going on in your head. Okay guys, speaking of writing things down, I need to write down this month's topic. Voila, decluttering and organizing. 
So another tip that I read, I think it was in the Happiness Advantage um, by Sean Anker, and it was a tip about changing your password to something that you're like working towards. So like if you want to change it every month to whatever our goals are, like change your computer password to something that's going to constantly remind you. So for instance, I actually didn't do a vision board this year. A lot of people asked if I do that. I changed my home screen, the background of my home screen from like work that I've done in the past to all of the goals that I have for the whole year. So I have like a no phone symbol, I have I love you on there, I have me playing tennis, me hugging, me smiling, I have me hiking, and it's all on my home screen just as a reminder. So if you guys like to keep like an old school day planner, I'm all for it, but if you are stuck to your phone or your computer, I would definitely use your calendar. So I would definitely recommend keeping a list of the things that you need to do for the day and just making sure that it's handy so you can like reference it throughout the day. And you can research breathing exercises. It actually helps to lower your heart rate and just like really make your body relax. So make sure that you're breathing. I never ever used to breathe, especially during workouts. So make sure you're just like. I actually heard for anxiety, if you breathe in for four seconds and hold it for four seconds and then release it for four seconds, it's supposed to be really, really helpful for your brain. So guys, the 10 minutes I told you about cleaning out your closet at night, do the same thing at work. You need to make sure that your desk is decluttered because if you walk into work the next day and your desk is a mess, it's gonna be super overwhelming for you. So take like even five minutes before you leave the office to make sure that your desk is decluttered. Okay guys, so that is our goal for the month. Our upgrade you goal is decluttering and organizing. And while you're making your list, I think a really great tip is to make three lists. So make a list of the things that you should be doing, the things that you need to do, and the things that you want to be doing. It will really help you just to like make good decisions when you're like trying to tackle your day. So good luck out there. Make sure you leave me comments. I want to know how you guys are doing all month. I'm going to be doing it with you. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.